Before submitting your app to the Google Play Store, there are a few other things you need to do. You need to give your app a good icon for one thing. A good app icon makes your app stand out from the rest since that's the first thing your users will see on their home screen. So you want something memorable. Just remember not to make it too eye searing. Your app icon needs to be 512 by 512 pixels in size and should be in a ping format. Once you, once you or your designer has created an appropriate app icon, you need to add it to your project. Let's do that now. With your project open, right click on the app res folder and select new image asset. In the dialog that pops up, in the foreground layer tab, ensure that the asset type is set to image. Click the ellipses next to the path field and select the previously prepared 512 by 512 app icon. Notice how the preview now shows your app icon for all the various icon versions. This is the simplest way to add an app icon and that you can simply click next and then finish to add the icon. Android Studio creates a default icon and this will overwrite that default icon with your custom one. That adds a custom icon to our app. But that's not all you can customize. There's also a display name for your app. The amount of space that's available for your app's name on the device screen is limited. So you may want to shorten the name or change the name you originally set when you started the project. Either way, it's a good idea to know how to change the display name for your app. And it's very simple to do in Android Studio. In the app manifest folder, open androidmanifest.xml. Notice the Android label attribute under the application. This is the displayed name of the app. While you can enter the displayed name directly here as a text string, you generally don't want to do that since all strings in Android apps are stored as string resources. This is done for easy localization. This means that you can have different display names for different languages. Notice how the string resource name is app name. You can change this by simply opening up strings XML and then making that change. Before you submit to the Google Play Store, you really need to try your app at least on one device. Sure, you did all your development on the app uh, of your app in the emulator and the app ran fine, but running on the emulator is not identical to running on a device. You need to test your app on a device to make sure that it runs correctly. First, you need to enable developer, developer mode on the device in order to be able to run or debug your apps on that device. And I'll show you how to do that in this demo. To get started, you'll need a device. Go to settings. Next, scroll all the way down and select about iPhone. Scroll to the build number and tap multiple times. You'll see a message that comes up and states, you're n steps away from becoming a developer. Keep tapping and it will eventually change to, you're now a developer. Go back to settings and scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll now see developer options enabled. Select developer options. Next, turn on the USB debugging switch under the debugging section. Connect your device to your computer via a USB. Your phone will prompt you to confirm this option via a dialog that states allow USB debugging. Click OK. Next, the phone will ask you to register your computer's RSA key fingerprint. If this is a trusted machine, then check always allow from this computer. That configures your device for running apps on it via Android Studio. Back in Android Studio, now click the Run button on Android Studio to run the app. When the dialog pops up asking you to select the deployment target, it should also list your devices. Select your device as the target and click OK. And that's it. You have a fully functional and fully configured app that has been tested on a device and is ready to be submitted to the Google Play Store. We'll do that next.